This is Ellen Mongan from Wow Mom. Do you have just a minute to listen and learn together? Because this is take five. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you have a minute and li listen and learn something just for you. The good thing about the Lord is that I can tell the same story to 50 different women. I can tell us a, a talk for 45 minutes and everyone receives something different. It'll quicken in your heart and you'll know that was my souvenir for today. That's what grace is all about. We have a personal God, Jesus Christ. We can read his word a million times, well, maybe two million. And each time we get something different out of his word. That's a living word. That's the Christ who lives within us and lives in, inside of us. So today our word's gonna be grace. You know, I've been doing a hundred day study about this book right here, The Passion Code. And it's, um, it's not even a study. I'm, giving, I'm reading the devotional taking it and putting it personal to me and then telling you all my story. You know, it says we are overcome Satan by the word of our mouth and the, the word of our, the pen of our mouth and the blood of the lamb. So we, our testimony has power. You know why it has power? I tell people that when someone speaks and they've walked on the water of that word, they haven't just read it, they haven't just heard another person, but they've walked on the water, they've got out of the boat and walked with Jesus on that word. It's in their soul. So their, their testimony holds power because it comes to the depths of their soul. They're not saying, one day, I heard about Jesus. No, it's like Job. I heard about you from my friends, and now I know you for myself. Do you know Jesus? Because today the word is grace. First thing that comes to mind in the scripture is, by grace you saved through faith, not of yourself, but a gift from God. I'll never forget the day I was walking with the Lord, and I was trying to overcome something in my life. It seemed way of a mountain of a thing to overcome. I put on my hiking boots. I, I sought the Lord's face and I started climbing that mountain. Then I came to a point and I said, Lord, you're supposed to be my savior. I can't overcome this on my own. If I thought I could do it, I wouldn't have chosen you as my savior. I wouldn't need a savior. I need you and I need you now. God came through as never before and he always does. So today the word is grace. And have you had experiences in your life where you felt like the grace was needed? And you, you just need it now, like I did. Many times in my life, I've had that experience over and over again. I'm always quicker to surrender than what I did before. <laughs> I'm always ready to say, Lord, I need you now. He'll send a, a book or a scripture or maybe even this YouTube speech that I'm getting right now to, to, to set you afire again, and lead you in the right direction. I love the scripture in um, Psalm 23. He makes me lie down in green pastures to restore my soul. Is your soul broken or afraid? Or are you going nowhere fast? Are you going round and round the mountain and never climbing up? Take a retreat. Take time alone with him. He lays down, you lay down in green pastures for him to restore the soul. Why is your soul not restored? Have you taken a moment to pause, step back, rest in his love? I used to take a retreat once a month on my birthday, the 7th, I mean, seven, August 7th. So I took every 7th in the month. January 7th, February 7th, I take a retreat day. I'm going to go back to that. It was healthy for my soul. Take a journal if you do that. He speaks to all his people. He wants you to listen up. So Grace, in this little book, 100 Days with Jesus, he was talking about the women in the Bible. There's like four women that God has in the Bible that are on the, the line of, of David and towards Jesus. And they were Tamar. They were, um, I'm going to read the list, Ruth. And then there was Bathsheba, and last but not least, oh my, I gotta get to get it right, y'all. So I'm looking down at my paper, and it is, um, there you go, see, um, Tamar, Bathsheba, oh, Rahab, how could I forget her? All these women had kind of like, mm, they didn't start like as the Catholic school girl that loved the Lord with all their heart. <laughs> they started out as, like, I will say that Tamar had a little bit of deception in her, and and did a little bit of deception on her father-in-law. Read it and you'll see. But it was Tamar. She, her brother, um, was not very nice and he actually raped her. Um, there was Bathsheba. She actually had so much love for David, she couldn't restrain, restrain her self-control. Together they, they went in the wrong direction. David's heart was set on God, but David had a, a wandering eye as well. And then last but not least, Rahab. All these women, as I said, had a shady past. Read all about them in the Word. You'll be, you'll discover that. Why did God choose them? It's funny because.
because today as I was reading this little chapter of 100 Days with Jesus, The Passion Code, I thought about the book I'm writing. Maybe maybe the never-ending finishing book, because I write so many different books. This is why did God choose, it's about why did God choose certain Bible characters. And the book itself is called, In God Alone I Place My Trust. That's kind of like my tag word all the time. I always go back to, well, I'm sorry that happened, but in God alone I place my trust. If I'm trusting in men, they're going to fail me. If I'm trusting in, in, in people that I think love me, they may be misunderstanding me. So God alone sees my heart, and I trust in him alone. So in the book, why did he choose them? It was by grace that they were saved through faith, not of herself, a gift from God. How, how wonderful is to know that we may fail God just like he fail us, but we put our trust in him alone. And when we know that we have failed him, we run to confession. We run to confession and we say, Lord, I failed you just like David did. Why does God choose who he does? Read the book when I get it out and you'll see. But the reason why I chose most people in this, in this scripture, these, these women, to be in the line of David and the line of Jesus is because there was grace and love to do a work. God has a work for you to do as well. You may not be, you may not be someone like Bathsheba, who falls in love with the king, who has to repent and give up their first son. You may not be like Tamar, who accidentally was in the wrong place at the wrong time, and no one rescued her, but God used her. You may not be Rahab, who helped my favorite, Joshua and Caleb, and, and this is another story you could read about. And you may not be, um, let's see, you may not be Tamar, Bathsheba, Rahab, or all the other ones in the Bible. Sarah, oh, there's Elizabeth. Yesterday on the show, I said Sarah was married to Abraham. I mean, I said Elizabeth married to Abraham. We all know it was Sarah, so if you all want to write me a letter, you can catch me at wowellen at yahoo.com. I'd like to hear your stories. I'd like to hear why you know that by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourself, the gift of God. I'd like to know any questions you may have. So today we learned the word grace. It's not a cheap grace. No, it costs something. It costs Jesus something. I really always take offense when someone goes, well, I sinned, it's under the blood. No, it cost Jesus something. Read the Passion of Christ and see what you think. What did it cost him? And how can we thank him? Once we know that we know that Jesus loves us and he died for us, our life becomes a thank you card for him. There's no slackers in the Christian walk. No one just takes it for granted. If you know Christ, you know what he suffered, and you want to be able to honor and love him the rest of your life and pass it on. I say to people, if you hear his voice, Pass it on. Many don't know. We need to pass the word on. Those are hearing ears. Now is the time to speak out. You be bold. Be strong. The Lord thy God is with you. And there's grace on your life to do that. Is that one long in? I thank you for taking a minute with me. I thank you for listening. And I'd like to hear from you. My website's www.ellenmongin.com. So for now, thank you for taking five with me. Thank the Lord for the grace on your life and the ways he saved you. Thank you.